Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Blackpool. We've had all the elements today. We've had wind, we've had rain, and we end with sunshine, which is rather apt because no city have recorded a 1-0 victory over Blackpool here today at Bloomfield Road uh, in front of a really good away end, a really positive away end, a really loud away end. Um, and it was a win that maybe taught us a little bit more about Dean Smith's side. I mean, there's, there's been a lot of talk about what they're not and, and, and what they don't do. I think maybe it's about time we started talking about what they do do. They, have, they possess real character, real resilience. They're capable of coming to places like this and performing really capably um, under very difficult testing circumstances. They're, they're durable. They're able to respond to questions. They might not be as aesthetically pleasing. They might not be as capable of scoring goals and, uh, and sort of amassing big wins. But in many ways, it's kind of irrelevant when A, you have a player like Timo Puki and B, you're able to defend in the manner that they did today. Um, eight unbeaten starts what is a tremendously busy month with um, really important three points. And it's difficult to walk away from anything, uh, walk away from here feeling anything but positive about what we've just seen because, uh, and that's, you know, we, where the press box is kind of there where my thumb is and that was the away end. So we, we were basically in the, in the away end this afternoon and actually as the fans funneled out, there are a fair few sort of coming up to us and saying, look, it wasn't pretty, but it got the job done. And that's probably the best way of assessing today. And I think maybe what proved the real difference was um, there was there was two moments pretty much identical. Andrew Amadelli can seize possession. Kenny uh, Dougal runs through on goal, probably doesn't have the pace, but also Norwich's defenders do have the pace to come back and, uh, and recover and, and prevent that from becoming what it was or what it could have become, which was a one beat one opportunity. Um, Thompson makes a similar mistake, plays the ball inside. Puki capitalises on that. He has the pace, the quality, and then the, the precision... Um, and when he's running through on goal like that, I think everyone who's watched Timu Puki over the last few years almost puts their head down and, or, or begins, or in my case, puts their head down and starts typing goal. Um, but in the stands, probably begins to celebrate because you, you know the end result already. And this was a really clever finish because he, he kind of shapes his body to go one way and then is able to kind of whip it the other. The goalkeeper moves in the other direction. And actually, you look at the finish, it's pretty central in terms of where the net is. But um, that's partly irrelevant to, to obviously the, the final conclusion. Um, it was it was uh, a, in those kind of situations when it's goalkeeper against striker, cat beat mouse, he's very good at just settling everything down, composed. And, and they're almost the situations where some strikers don't relish because they have too much time to think and they kind of overthink those opportunities. But Timo Buki doesn't. He's, he's cool, he's calm, he's collected. He's able to, to pick a spot and find it consistently. But also they're different type of finishes that he's able to execute when he's running through one-on-one. -on -one. Um, and that's what we saw this afternoon. And, and from there, um, and I'll dissect the game fully in a minute, but from there to, 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 to halftime, Norwich were really dominant, played probably some of the best football we've seen them play all season um, in terms of, of quality in possession, com uh, composure in possession. Um, the way they pressed was really intelligent. They were on top. Um, and yeah, well, I mean, I'll dissect the game. I'm going to go backwards first uh, because the opening 20 minutes wasn't that. It wasn't Norwich City being calm and composed in possession and accurate with their passing and purposeful in their play. It was a little bit messy, a little bit chaotic. Blackpool were able to kind of dictate and dominate and get on top. Um, they had a real, real joy with kind of the two number 10s, the two inverted wingers they were playing in, in, in Corbiano and, and Perveda on, on either side. They were just picking up little pockets that were stretching Norwich City's midfield um, too in, in McLean and Nunez. And they were struggling really because the rest of the team was quite passive to then fill the holes that were being left. And that created opportunities for them to, uh, crossing opportunities, but, but also opportunities centrally. Um, they hit the post through, through Corbiano in, in the first half where, again, maybe that's where we look at it and we, we look at the quality difference and say, if that's at the other end, Norwich City probably take that chance. And with the championship, you know, teams will cough up. They will... Un um, uh, uh, complete unforced errors they will um, be a little bit careless in possession at times and, and so Norwich City were able to camp in to wait to, to ride out that period and to be fair to this side and again it goes back to what I said at the start we talk an awful lot about what Dean Smith's Norwich City aren't but what they are is capable of riding those periods and I think they've proven that this season because if you look at the the three that they have Cruel, Omar Amadeli, Grant Hanley they don't concede a lot of chances and a lot of real clear-cut chances and nor did they today. The, the Corbiano chance came from, from a deflected cross that kind of ended up at him at the, at the back post. And it was just a slow start. Um, and, and they were quite, I don't know, they were quite passive, quite slow, quite, they looked quite tired, to be honest, which is quite um, a funny thing to, to see in a team that has just 
kind of had a, a two-week break from league action. Obviously, various players have been playing for their countries abroad and, and playing in different parts of the world in different conditions and the travelling involved in that. But Norwich were able to ride out that period. The goal then, for me, dramatically shifts the, the, the game and, and, and what the game is and, and, and the pendulum of the game, the momentum of the game suddenly swings in Norwich City's favour. And that is when we start to see Marcelino Nunez pick up possession and really begin to kind of lead the game and puff his chest out and look like the, the confident player that we probably associated more with his early performances rather than perhaps what we saw going into the international break where he just began to get a little bit, not lost, I think the loss is probably a bit harsh, but there were mixed performances in there. There were some brilliant things he was doing. You could see his, his talent and, and obvious technical capabilities, but in the cut and thrust of the championship, he was, he was getting a little bit... Um, I don't know, I guess it's that, that last bit of adaptation, isn't it, that, that was maybe lacking from, from his game. And today we saw what he is, which is a, a brilliant footballer, a brilliant technician, capable of playing some wonderful passes. There was one reverse pass to Onel Hernandez in particular that was, that was very good. Some passing between the lines, which was, was excellent. A uh, free kick that hit the bar, a shot that was tipped over by, by Chris Maxwell. This was all in the period between Timo Buki's goal and half-time, where Norwich City were really in the, in the uh, ascendancy. They were pushing the accelerator down. And they probably should have got more, more goals. Kenny McLean hit the post in, in, in that period with a header. Um, and they were kind of carving opportunities out of will. And they looked like the dominant, capable team that probably we've all been expecting and probably all been asking to see um, from Dean Smith's Norwich. And we got that in that period. The second half then, uh, I felt, became a little bit of an arm wrestle again at times. But Norwich still had opportunities. Um, so from there, it, it was probably about switching on game management mode at the right moment. And again, that's another facet to Dean Smith's Norwich City that maybe Daniel Farker's Norwich didn't have as well. Um, the, the ability to kind of suck the life out of games, to be cute and clever, knowing when, when there's a moment to run the clock a little bit or a moment just to break the momentum or win a clever free kick or do kind of the nasty, ugly stuff that you need to do on the road in the championship. Because when you come to places like this and the crowd is on top of you and it's, it's, it's quite a small, tight stadium, this. Um, but when... So, so when there's noise, it kind of bounces around a little bit and it can, it can make it perhaps seem a, little, a bit more intense than some of the, the grand stadiums that you go to. Um, and, you know, they had long throws to contend with. They had really bad wind to, to, to contend with. They had uh, rain to contend with as well. Um, Gary Medine came on. He's a real presence. I thought Jerry Yates did some good stuff at times. The two attacking options kind of floated about a little bit, which, which can be quite difficult. And they managed to kind of keep their heads and navigate those problems and solve those problems on the pitch. And I think probably what we're seeing is, is a maturity now, but, but also a consistency in terms of what they're doing against the ball and a consistency in how they kind of manage games. Because as Dean Smith has said numerous times, you can aspire to want better performances, to want more free-flowing football, but they're winning football matches. Uh, and maybe this is the moment that actually we, we need to park those feelings of desiring more from Norwich City because... What this Norwich City team is doing is a hell of a lot. They're working hard. They're, they're, they're able to manage games. They're defensively a little bit more resilient than perhaps they have been in the past. And I think actually when, when Norwich got relegated from the Premier League last time around, I probably wanted to see all of those things. But then it's probably the selfishness that, that takes over from everyone. That You want to see more on top of that. You want to see free-flowing um, football. You want to see goals. But actually a 1-0 win here is actually as important for the camaraderie, for the togetherness, for the, for the bond between the fans and the players than a 3-0 win would have been, for example. And, and it's these games where you see the real character and, the, and, and a big light gets shone on what the team is in terms of an intangible, um, uh, sort of, um, from an, in it, what was I going to say? In, in terms of an, an intangible perspective. And you, you begin to see what's between the ears, so to speak. And I think Norwich City have a lot of good players at this level who are capable between the ears, who know how to manage a game now because of the structure they've been put in. And you have to give credit to Dean Smith and the way they're coached because... They're not a sexy team. They're an effective team. They're a damn good effective team. And they're, they're a damn nightmare to play against, I can imagine, because um, they do it so well and they squeeze games so well and they press so well. And yet they've got the quality to kind of slice through you. And if you do serve up an opportunity, which teams are pretty much at regular intervals, um, you, 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 you will get punished. And you will get punished by players who have real quality, like Timo Buki, like Marcelino Nunez, like Aaron Ramsey, like Onel Hernandez. Um, and they're the type of players at this level which, which cause a devastating impact. And actually, you can, you can then look uh, and want to look towards the Premier League, but you've got to do this bit first. And if, you, if your mind is, is looking at the Premier League when you come to places like this, you get slapped, you get beaten up, you get beaten, you, you lose the game. Um, 
Uh, I felt what Norwich did today was was actually manage the situation, manage the game, but also um, some really good football within that as well. And it's it, it wasn't a 90-minute performance, and we're still probably yet to see a full 90-minute performance from Norwich City. Um, but there were really good periods of this one, uh, and that period, they almost half-time probably halted their momentum a little bit, so to speak. Um, just to get into to some individual performances, I've kind of touched upon Marcelino Nunez, but what a joy he is to watch. I think whenever he's on the pitch, you're guaranteed entertainment and qualities. Kind of my type of footballer. Someone who wants to get on the ball, someone who wants to dictate play, someone who wants to... Um, he's almost the, the, the kind of... Um, uh, he, he keeps, he's the heartbeat of Norwich, so to speak, the drummer of Norwich, kind of keeps the play going um, in possession, is, is capable of shifting the play, which is really important when you come up against teams who want to play in a low block and you have to shift the ball. I've explained this a lot. When a team is in a low block, you have to shift the ball quickly to try and disrupt that, to create gaps. And he's really good at that part. Um, I, I actually think that before the break, that there's probably been a lot of pressure put on him quite early. And I don't mean from supporters, I mean in terms of the way Norwich play, because there were games where it was almost being funneled through him and he didn't quite look ready for that. But when that kind of opportunity arose today, he, he did really take that and he did stick his shoulders out and go, yep, OK, I'm going to take this game and I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run with it. Um, and it, it's when you look at games like this and you look at performances from him like this and you realise there's so much more to come from him. And, and that's an incredibly positive thought because... Um, I don't think he's fully adapted yet. I don't think he, he fully understands the championship yet. There are periods where he can kind of linger on the ball, although there wasn't so much of that today. Quality set pieces. Again, if you, if you do want to shift it towards the Premier League um, outlook, and, and again, I don't think necessarily you can too much. But if you do want to, that's something that Norris City didn't have in their locker. They didn't have a free t- a kick taker. I don't think they, they got around the box too much to have too many shooting opportunities. But it's those fine margins when you go to a higher level that can make a big difference. And he's got that in his locker. Um, press as well. And, and again, understated next to him, Kenny McLean, I thought was, was very good again today. And, and he's quietly now, those two are, are building up some momentum and some rhythm. Dean Smith said after the game, he kind of contemplated giving Liam Gibbs a start, but probably elected against it because obviously he's had, uh, he's had 30 days out and uh, it's been 30 days since he played. And so that probably would have been too much of, uh, of an ask for him to drop in today. But actually that midfield too, I felt coped after an initial period of, being quite stretched and, uh, and being run around a little bit by what Blackpool um, by what Blackpool did, but really it was the goal that, that shifted this this game. I want to mention Aaron Ramsey as well because um, incre- increasingly impressed with him. Just a, a very intelligent footballer, someone who's who's capable of playing between the lines, who wants to progress, who's good at getting it on the half turn, um, but actually probably probably a really good runner and someone who can get around and is quite dynamic in the way he plays. Um, and he just connects so well. He's, he's a really good connector for what Norwich City do when they, when they do get the ball and they do move it and Marcelino Nunez does progress the ball forward from kind of that middle phase to the, to the attacking phase. He's very good in those kind of bits of combination play around the box or um, actually playing the pass himself. He, he gets some really nice positions, creates some really nice angles for, for, his, um, for, for, for his teammates. He is capable of kind of creating space as well with some of his running. Just, just a very intelligent footballer in the way he plays and I think it's very easy when you come to places like this to kind of hide a little bit as one of those players and, and to not demand the ball. But actually, I think it was, uh, I keep using the word character, it was a real test of character for him to come here as, a, uh, as someone who's played academy football, who has been, um, uh, who, who's a lone player from, from a big football club in England, to come to the championship and kind of wilt in these occasions and think, well, it's OK, I can kind of jog about a bit, I'll play a couple of passes and I'll play safe passes as well. And he's not that type of player who wants the ball demands the ball at times and actually I think you can see the respect that he's already gained from his teammates the fact they're willing to give him the ball in really tight situations and that trust they have for him in those situations is I think telling in terms of of, of what they think of him but but also the, the develop the relationship that he's developed very rapidly with Timu Buki is, is really encouraging um, as well so so that's that's good to see uh, other thing I wanted to mention on El Hernandez been a lot of talk about him in terms of is he just a finisher is he someone who just finishes games um, and I think it's, it's interesting that he's started starting away games. That's kind of when we see him start games as a general rule of thumb. We saw it at Sunderland. We saw it here today. Uh, I felt he kind of did what he needed to do. Gave Norwich a different option in the front three, stretched the play a little bit, um, caused the fullback a few issues. Um, but again, probably lacked that in products, which is what we associate with, with Onel Hernandez at times. Um, but nonetheless, I, uh, I think he probably did enough. Talk Campbell wasn't here today because, uh, because he had 
a knock. Um, look, Norwich have tougher tests to come this month. They've got to play Burnley, um, Watford, Sheffield United all the way from home. Big, big, big tests. They go to Reading on Tuesday night, who have started the season very positively as well under Paul Ince. So this is, an, this is a different test but maybe not as tough a test in terms of complete football matches. But you still have to navigate those. And when you can get a 1-0 win and, and, and uh, you activate that cliched, um, perfect away performance, then you absolutely take those three points and run. Norwich City um, are now a unbeaten. Seven of those are wins. They're, they're, they're off in the championship now. Um, and to be honest, at this moment in time, it's very, very hard to see who stops them. But again, we'll find out for sure when they play those teams um, who came down with them and, uh, and Sheffield United, who, who are up there and keep managing to win games. I think they were drawing it with, with West Brom. So I'm not quite sure how that finished because of, of various bits, but they keep managing to get results at this level. So that's going to be a, a, a tough test. And we're going to learn a lot more about this Norwich City side. The performances like that on the road, show character, show heart. And when you perform like that, the fans respond as they did and, uh, and they were excellent today. Um, and it was good, interesting to be, to be amongst it. The first time I've, I've probably been in and away end, so to speak since, I, uh, since I, I took this job three years ago. So uh, that, was, that was a nice kind of personal element. Right, long trip home. Thank you all very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that victory. It's kind of one of those, I think, when, when it's gritty, when players have to roll up their sleeves and, and, and their socks and they're wet and they're muddy. It's that sort of win that everyone just takes real pride and, and really enjoys for different reasons to, to a 4-0, for example. So... It's good. Right, let's uh, make the long descent, Sal. Thank you very much for watching. Of course, Pinkin.com and the Pinkin Plus app. Plenty more content over there. Uh, we've got some uh, reaction from Dean Smith, from Aaron Ramsey on the way, Paddy's pointers, all of that good stuff as well. Uh, you know where to find it, as well as some, some more videos uh, on the YouTube channel and elsewhere. Thank you very much for watching. Enjoy the rest of your Saturday. See you soon.